Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about Windows Media Center and what exactly is it, for those who don't know. The reason I'm doing this video is because Windows 10 is coming out pretty soon and a lot of people are actually trying to promote Microsoft, you know, they're trying to encourage Microsoft into including Windows Media Center and Windows 10, hopefully in the home version. So first, let's go and talk about what Windows Media Center is. So the thing is, a lot of people don't even know what it actually is. A lot of people think Windows Media Center is just some sort of fancy media player. Well, it is a media player in sort of a way. You can play your videos, your music, watch your, you know, look at your pictures and things like that on it, but it's more than just that. Every computer with Windows 7 Home Premium or higher has Windows Media Center. Windows Media Center was actually started out in 2000, I want to say 2003 or 2004 in Windows XP Media Center edition. Probably one of the most common XP versions of Media Center was Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005. It was also continued on into Windows Vista and into Windows 7. In Windows Vista, uh, Media Center started to be included and um, it was actually included in Home Premium. It was included in Ultimate. And I think that's it. Um, Business and Home Basic did not have it. But in Windows 7, See, Windows 7 Home Premium, Professional, Ultimate, and even Enterprise have Windows Media Center. So basically, here we're looking at Windows Media Center on this TV. Now you're probably getting an idea, oh, it's, a t it's like a TV program. Yes, uh, Windows Media Center is actually a set-top box replacement program. Well, do you say there's a set-top box on the table there, on the, on the entertainment center there, but it's not actually being used. It's actually a backup for if I have any issues with the computer. Windows Media Center is more than just a media player. It's actually it's actually a DVR program. So let's go into guide. It has a guide like a set-top box does. This is actually Time Warner cable by the way. Time Warner digital cable. And let's go down to um, record a TV. For example here are some programs now we're recorded. This is actually my mom and dad's TV box. All their stuff goes on here. Setup has a two terabyte hard drive. It's that computer down there actually. Let's see how much space we have available. We have 218 hours available. A recording space on this system and it's about a third of the way full so yes Windows Media Center is more than just a media player <clears throat> it can be used to replace every single set top box in your house yes it can and um, that can save you a ton of money on lease fees although we do have two set top boxes one there and one in the garage um, <clears throat> we don't even we don't even really need them. Um, basically, the one in the garage could be replaced with a media center extender if I really wanted to. So, now that you have an idea of what Windows Media Center is, sort of a way, let's go ahead and show you the setup that we have here. Here we're looking at the Midtower Lux Black Max, and it has something special in it that actually runs the whole Windows Media Center setup in his house. It has the TV tuner. Inside the Black Max, we have a Seton Infinity V6 PCI Express tuner card. Now, Seton claims this card cannot be used in a network tuner configuration, but yes, it can. It's just not officially supported anymore. Though I don't have any issues at all with it. <clears throat> Some Seton tuners can be a hit or miss in regards to, um, you know, some things. But this one here has not really given me any major issues. I did have an intent. Um, Infinity V4, and I had quite a few issues with it. Had to return it numerous times, but this Infinity V6 has been working just fine. Since we're on Time Warner Cable, we have um, Switch Digital Video, which requires the use of a tuning adapter. It's this little set-top box-looking thingy. Cable line plugs into that, along with the um, TV tuner itself, and th this plugs into the USB port on the computer. And this simply acts as 
a device that sends a signal to Time Warner to change the channel to a switch digital video channel if needed. So anyways, the Seton FMTV6 offers six tuners. You can record at six shows at once. You know, a lot of um, service providers like to boast that their DVRs can record up to four or five shows at once, or even six shows at once, but they like to charge you a good bit of money for that service. So basically, that's TV box number one. Let's show you the other one. Here's TV box number two. Here's the main screen of Windows Media Center. Show you the guide. Again, there's a guide, which is free, by the way. TV likes to charge you a service fee for this. Windows Media Center is completely free. Provided you have Windows 7. <clears throat> now, this computer here isn't really set up for recording TV. However, I think there is a show on it. Yeah, this one only has a 64 gigabyte solid state drive. The other machine had a two terabyte drive for TV storage and a 64 gigabyte solid state drive for the LS. I guess I can show you the TV <laughs> recording storage, which we don't have much here. Yeah, three and a half hours HD. <laughs> That's all this thing has. I didn't build this one to be re to recording shows. My grandma doesn't really record TV. She just watches it. So It serves its purpose. I'm getting ready to replace this one with something else later on. That's my plan anyway. So yeah, this is two Windows Media Center boxes, as you see. You know, considering, you know, if we didn't have any set-top boxes at all, this would already saved us about probably 20-something dollars per month. So, let's go back in here. Now, of course, there's my messy room. It never, it never stays clean. We had the Mitara Deluxe, which used to house the Seton Infinity TV tuner, but now it's just one of the client machines, I guess you can call it. This machine can also watch TV as well through Windows Media Center. So, that's three TVs now that we've um, replaced equipment for. So, let's go back in here. <clears throat> so as you see, this is my example of a Windows Media Center setup. Now, um, Seton and other companies offer extenders, or you can use your Xbox 360 as an extender for Windows Media Center. That way, you can watch TVs on multiple, com you know, multiple TVs in your house without having to spend a whole bunch of money on set-top boxes, whole house DVR, <laughs> none of that crap. Only waste your money on it. But here's the thing that really concerns me is Microsoft, I think, is on is kind of on the fence between discontinuing Media Center completely or you know continuing continuing what they've been doing since Windows 8. See, in Windows 8, they pulled Windows Media Center from the home version of the of the OS and required you to buy a professional and an additional fee to get one as Media Center. Now, there's actually a thing called the Pro Pack, and it's about a hundred bucks, which I think is ridiculous, considering Windows 7 has it for free. So uh, Microsoft started to pull it, you know, in Windows 8, make you have to get the um, force you to get the professional version of Windows 8 or 8.1, and an additional fee to get the you know, actual Media Center. Once you get it, it's actually called Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 with Media Center. And guess what? The Media Center is simply just a s sort of stripped down version of the Windows 7 Media Center. Because um, in Windows 8, you have more restrictions. You can't use um, extenders like the Seton Echo. You have to use a, an Xbox 360. And guess what? The new Xbox One doesn't even support being used as an extender. Gives you an idea of what Microsoft's trying to do here. They're trying to phase it out. Now the big problem here is Media Center itself is not a bad product. It's it's actually a decent product. I've I mean, I've had to work out some bugs with it, and I don't think it's necessarily the fault of the um, software itself. I had some driver issues a while back and I've had of course had this issues with my seat and tuner a long time ago. But for the most part, this setup works pretty well. 
There are some bugs, however, that really need to be worked out, and I'm afraid the thing is, see, Microsoft is not really paying much attention to the Mies in anymore. So these minor bugs won't get worked out unless they continue to support it. So, for example, I'll show you, let's say, maybe a local channel. I gotta make it brief, though. Still a local channel. Come on. Well, it's a little too far there. Like CBS. Just so that way you can see this thing play TV. Bull riding. So, anyways, you can see um, this is the setup here, actually. You know, playing some TV. Let's go to guide. Okay, enough of that. So basically, um, again, the, the problem here is Microsoft has never really pushed me center as, you know, what it actually is. It's actually a DVR program, not just some, not just some sort of fancy media player. You know, it's, it's funny. I asked some people at work, what do you think it was media center? They didn't know it was. They thought it was, just, again, just some sort of media player. They had no idea that it was actually a DVR, you know, DVR replacement program. Now, some of you guys out there will say, well, why don't you try XBMC or Boxy or something like that? Well, here's the thing. And a lot of people don't seem to realize this. Windows Media Center, to my knowledge, is, only, is the only program that is actually certified by Cable Labs. You know, that's the company that works with cable companies to protect cable content. And it's also um, who standardized the cable card. You know, Cable Labs... You know, Windows Media Center is, I think, the only program that's even certified by Cable Labs for use with playback of protected content. For example, with Time Warner Cable, everything but local channels has copy one um, one copy tags, which really those are supposed to only be applied to premium channels like movie channels and things like that. So in my case, um, like Boxy or XBMC would only get me my local channels, like 1 through 21. Everything else I wouldn't be able to do because it's encrypted protected content. So, Windows Media Center is pretty much the program to use if you're going to replace your cable set top box or DVR. Because, you know, with digital cable, you know, pretty much almost all cable companies out there, everything is scrambled and requires some sort of decryption device. And many of uh, the channels have, have um, copy once tags on them, meaning they're protected channels. You must have a HDCP compliant TV. HDCP compliant video card and things just to play the channels. So, um, you know, the, the only, again, back to what I was saying earlier, the only time I even see Microsoft even push Windows Media Center as a DVR replacement program was back in 2009. So, yeah, I've seen a commercial back in 2009. I'm not sure if it was an actual Windows Vista commercial or if it was a commercial from one of the companies like HP or Dell, but they did include a snippet of using Windows Media Center or at least showing the guide. You know, this oh, generally overall, um, Windows Media Center was rarely ever marketed. You know, as as a whole, um, they didn't. They never really marketed a whole lot. So many people don't even realize what it is. And it's just crazy to note that for all these years that Windows Seven has been out, and even some of the technically advanced people never knew about Windows Media Center, and never knew that they could replace their DVR box and save a ton of money and have additional features. So, you know, now I've explained all those things, you're probably wondering, you know, will Windows Media Center be included in Windows 10? Now, Windows 8 and 8.1, they moved Windows Media Center to being only available in Windows 8 Pro, which is kind of strange because Pro is what you would consider being used in the business. Um, like, for example, Windows Vista Business version, which is the equivalent of professional, did not even have Media Center. Um, neither did Windows XP Professional. Now, Windows XP uh, Media Center Edition was actually built off of Professional and included the Media Center, but that version, you cannot join domains and do things like that. But basically, um, in Windows 8 and 8.1, they moved Media Center to Professional and they required you to buy Pro, which, considering most consumer grade laptops and desktops come with the core or home version, so you had to spend a crap load of money to get the pro version and then you have to spend money on the add-on which is really ridiculous and 
of course, considering that the media center in Windows 8 is identical to 7, except you have some features missing, it's kind of strange. It, it would make, actually, it would just make more sense to just put Windows 7 on your machine and have media center. So, um, basically, if you look at the Qcuter Company Facebook page, and I believe I'm going to post a link to this URL here as well for this um, article I found. Um, basically, Windows 10 is going to be releasing in several new um, versions. This is actually a leaked um, from an internal build, 10036. If you look at the code, you'll see all the different SKUs. You know, you have your core. You're also going to have an education version, it looks like. And look at the bottom, very bottom. Professional WMC, that means Windows Media Center. So it does look like they're going to include Media Center in Windows 10. Now, will it be upgraded by any means? Um, we don't really know for sure as of right now. And there's still a chance they, might, they may not have included it at all. But basically, if you like Windows Media Center, or if you seem to like it now, you know what it's actually for, there is actually a site you can visit. I scroll down a little bit. Um, I guess I can include this in my video as well. If I don't include these links, let me know in the comments. This link here takes you to um, the user voice forum for Microsoft for Windows feature suggestions. And if you scroll down, there is include Windows Media Center and Windows 10 Standard Home Edition. Now, not sure if that's going to happen or not, but you know, it looks like Microsoft might be going back to the way they did things in Windows XP, having a separate version you know, of the OS with Windows Media Center, and they may call it Media Center Edition, you never know. Or they may call it Windows 10 Pro with Media Center. But anyways, um, just wanted to get this out. Um, hopefully some of you guys may learn what Windows Media Center truly is for, and what it's capable of doing. And it's one of the main reasons why I'd like to continue to see it supported. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And the question for comments. Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.